There are many labels pinned on us at work, but one of the best is to be called intelligent. Contrarily to many people's view about intelligence, it is not just about having information. Intelligence is insight. It is the ability to accurately and eloquently deliver your facts in a way that is pleasant and understandable to your listener. If you sound knowledgeable, you will be taken seriously at meetings and elsewhere. In this video, I will share with you how to sound intelligent in any private or public conversation in 7 ways. 1. Don't make assumptions. It is generally said that assumption is the least form of knowledge. Well, the bitter truth is that assumption is no knowledge at all. The starting point of every conversation is to know what you're talking about. Assumptions are communication shortcuts, which often are the root of every miscommunication and misunderstanding. We assume that people know what we mean. We think that people interpret things the same way we do. We believe that we have been clear enough. These assumptions, however, do not portray us as astute. Instead, they can make the listener lose interest totally in the whole conversation. Besides, how would you feel about a person who from the beginning of the end of a conversation makes statements without facts to bolster them? Let me guess, an annoying blabber or an empty drum that makes noise. If you want to be perceived as an intelligent person in any conversation, you must learn to talk with facts. Do your research about the subject of discussion and make coherent remarks. Be sure that your sources are accurate and your insights are grounded in the most current information. 2. Simplify your language Winston Churchill once said, Short words are best and the old words when short are best of all. Often, you may feel pressure to use scholarly words to sound smart, but it's best to focus on being understood. People won't take you seriously if they don't know what you're saying. As a matter of fact, rather than pay attention, they will make fun of you. It is however so much better to stick to everyday words that most people would know. If you want to share an idea, try to use the best words. If your opinion is career-based and the person you are conversing with is not the same field with you, your ability to break down terms to their level of understanding shows that you are intelligent. Clichés, especially biz blab, are the opposite of eloquence. Use unexpected but common words or phrases that memorably illustrate points. Ironically, the simpler your words and sentences, the more profound you'll sound. 3. Use body language Body language comes into the picture not only during regular conversation but also during formal discussions, interviews, group discussions, panel meetings and etc. Proper body language not only conveys the right message to the recipient but also attracts or repels the recipient. Without a positive body language, it won't be easy to communicate and survive in the professional area, personal lives and in the world in general. At the top of the list of nonverbal communication forms are eye contact. Looking into the eyes of the other person shows sincerity, but it also reveals that you are confident and sure of the points you are making. Facial expressions are also an essential form of body language. Your facial expression can quickly sell you out when you are lying or unsure of your words. Also, hand movements seem to emerge when you speak. So, you must endeavor to be conscious of the actions of your hand because they either aid in communication or cause distractions. When you use your hands to emphasize key points, it shows that you are intelligent. If you are not actively using a gesture, Keep your hands still. Fiddling with your glasses, rattling your papers, scratching yourself and so forth can distract you. 4. Speak out but don't shout Have you ever almost so fallen asleep while having a conversation with someone? Talking to someone in a low tone does not just tend to make a person fall asleep. It also shows that you are not even interested in the conversation. When having a conversation with someone, speak loud enough for your listener to hear you without having to strain their ears. On the other hand, don't talk as though you are trying to force your points on the other person. Avoid raising your voice, except if it is for emphasis sake. Speaking with low energy in your tone makes it seem like you are not even sure if what you are saying is correct. Also, talking too loudly shows disrespect and may cause your listener not to want to listen to you anymore. Thus, any of the two tones, too high or too low, 
is not an intelligent way to converse. 5. Use pauses to create emphasis. Silence is not just golden. It is also the crowning glory of sound dialogue. Instead of just blabbing fast like someone who has hot food in his mouth, try taking short breaks during conversations. Carefully applying commas and full stops while speaking shows that you are eloquent, smart and have an understanding of your narration. For example, a slight pause before you are about to say something important creates suspense. It makes the other person to be more interested in what you want to say and to hang on your every word. Similarly, a pause after you have said something important emphasizes its importance and gives your listener a moment to reflect on its importance. Besides that, giving the listener a moment to reflect, making pauses during conversation enables you to ascertain if the listener's attention is still concentrated on you or if they are no longer listening to you. This is a smart way of conversing. 6. Use active sentences When the subject of your sentence acts, is called active voice, while passive voice happens when your subject receives the work. Generally, active voice is better, even in writing, because it's more concrete and concise than passive voice, which is usually vague. Practice phrasing your sentences so the subject is always acting. For instance, instead of saying the book was written by Ben Katzen, say Ben Katzen wrote the book. The first statement is a passive voice that places the subject Ben Cassin on the receiving end rather than the performing side. Apart from the fact that using the passive voice for your conversation does not show that you are sound, some sentences when made with a passive voice can confuse your listener. 7. Eliminate filler words You may accidentally use filler words without even knowing it. Now imagine a marketer walks up to you to persuade you to buy his goods and service and throughout his speech he keeps saying, um, actually, like, and a whole lot of other filler words. Do you think you will be convinced to buy? Using filler words once or twice in a conversation is not out of place. However, when you use it too often, it spoils the whole discussion. Using filler words in an interview is unnecessary. They make you seem like you are unprepared or forgetful, and they distract your listener from paying attention to the central message of your speech. Words like um, ah, er, like, and you know, make you sound uninformed, even though you might know a lot about what you're talking about. While it is hard to stop using these words, the good news about filler words is that once we become aware that we're using them, they will go away quickly. If you can eliminate filler words, you will be better in your communication. You don't need a vast vocabulary to sound smart in a conversation. Instead, focus on presenting your ideas clearly and understandably. With a few new habits, you can impress your friends, outshine your fellow students or make waves at work.